What keeps you awake at night? Sea levels are rising globally. Fears fueled by horror stories. Among the worst flu season in a decade, and it hasn't peaked yet. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Another series of deadly terror attacks. Because you know that thing your brain does in the middle of the night? This crazy thing where it takes a small problem and it just makes it enormous? Wunderbar. Good to be back. Good to be back. Hello. I'm in a closet. So am I. <laughs> but I'm in a new closet. Ooh. Yes, in my fun. new apartment that's still overpriced, but it's bougie. <laughs> um, but it's LA. I mean, like, what so are you going to do? You're paying too much, but this time it's worth it. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I don't want to say what it is because it would make anybody who lives in any other state wince. Um, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, definitely looking at grad schools has made me like consider how much cheaper it's going to be wherever I go. Like, if I go to it fucking doesn't, Baltimore, yeah, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah, I go to Baltimore it, it and they're like, <laughs> oh my god, a one bedroom apartment is $1,500. And I'm like, a one bedroom apartment <laughs> is $1,500. <laughs> Christian was telling me about his friend who moved to Utah, and, like, there's no way that he didn't get a deal or, like, is splitting a room, but right now his portion of rent is $150, and I wanted to vomit. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Really, really cool and nice. Cool, cool. Hi, where are things that keep me up at night? Welcome back. I'm Olivia. Uh... I'm Brooke. (laughs) And today we're doing the episode that we always need to have, which is gong noise. And for those who don't know what that is, it's when we just talk about some good things because, frankly, we need it. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we we didn't expect to need it this quickly. Uh, I was thinking, eh, once every couple months, whatever. But it's been, what, like four minisodes since we did it and we're already yeah. back here <laughs> yeah yeah well the prison one did not leave me in a good place oh. and i'm i'm gonna tell you preemptively that the uh next series is not gonna put you in a good place either i i feel like just hear me out uh-huh. that might be the name of our game um Shit, you know what yeah you're right like i just thought of the oh, title shit. again that, is yeah, that just... why we're so miserable all the time Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't help, at the very least. Um, so today, <laughs> the name of the game in this mini-sode, which is very off-brand, is we just talk, each of us talks about, like, three three news stories that are just nice and put us in a good mood. You know? We just need to lower the blood pressure every once in a while. And then at the end, I have, like, a fun personal story that actually hey. is, like, positive. So nice. that never fucking happens to me. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Um, yeah. First story, uh, do you remember Akon? I do. Vividly um, from middle school. Do you know what happened to Akon? I don't. So Akon, and I'm going to say about 2009 to 2014, kind of, uh, he was very popular, but he wanted to do more international stuff. And he found that he was like hitting this rock wall where he's like, oh, I want to perform somewhere in Africa. I want to perform somewhere um, just like less fortunate. And they were like, well, we don't have stadiums. We don't have lights for stadiums. So you'd have to perform during the day. Um, We just don't have the means of doing that. And he Hmm. was like, well, I don't like that. So in about 2014, he created a foundation, or a company rather, called Akon Lighting Africa. Whoa. Heard of it? No. They are a for-profit company, he's made that apparently clear, um, that works with like countries in like Africa and other places in the global south to provide them with um, solar-based energy. What? That yeah. is so awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I, I looked it up and I've read about it, and essentially his mentality was, you know, whenever foreign countries would come to, 
and let's say Africa, for instance, they would say, okay, well, we need to create a grid system and then connect everybody to the grid system. And that requires like a huge amount of infrastructure. And yes, is like the right. most efficient way to provide energy, but like is just not feasible across those long distances of land there. It grossly expensive to connect a grid system. I think the statistic is like 400 million people Ooh. live without any access to power whatsoever. Um, wow. And so he was like, well, what if we just create local like power systems that are like self-sustainable and in order to build and sustain them, we provide local communities with jobs and then pairing with that, we're able to connect them to like smartphones or just cell phones in general because it'll all be localized and like interconnected wow. to a degree. So uh, my understanding is there is a Chinese company that um, contributed about one billion dollars in uh, <laughs> oh my god, like in an investment loan for African countries to essentially set up these localized um, energy like facilities, and it's all solar based because essentially, and this is actually kind of interesting, and I have a lot to say about this. It the Chinese company <laughs> actually did this because um, Chinese solar techno technology is prohibitively expensive to like ship to the US because of our tariffs, which is purposeful. Um, right. And so as a result, they're like, well, we want to provide solar power to other people and we can't do that anywhere in the US. So, and I, and I looked it up, the Chinese company is called Jiangsu International. Um, and they provided this $1 billion credit line so that they would be able to sell their products to these people because they can't, they can't do it internationally. Well, they could, but like, you know what I'm trying to say, in like right. U.S. Yeah, waters yeah. and everything. Wow. <laughs> um, which is like weird because there's a lot of like arguments saying that the like his company is just like being used by a chinese corporation to like sell goods but like we live in the world of capitalism my friends so like you gotta take we them where sure you get them do. um and at the end of the day they have yeah. um i think he said like they've reached at least as of 2014 an interview a hundred thousand households um and 30,000 street lights that are solar powered um, so he said when he first visited Africa, you wouldn't even be able to drive at night because there were no street lights, or you wouldn't be able to walk around like complete pitch black. Like, wow. Even now when it's like super dark, even without street lights, we have like light pollution. So right, it's just you ambient. know right, but there's like nothing there, like in the middle of nowhere. So his kind of thought process is here is he said my end goal was to provide them with power jobs and create a sustainable atmosphere for them to facilitate facilitate like education and transport and connectivity with the modern world so that's my positive news and that's why akon hasn't been making music anymore because he's been fucking powering africa wow, so that's <laughs> I don't know where I expected this to go, but powering Africa was definitely not at the top of my list. But right? That's, that's really cool. And I, I know there's, like, a lot that can be, like, broken down about, like, a, an already millionaire trying to, like, make more money off of an impoverished country, but, like, yeah. hundreds of thousands of people who had no power who now have power is objectively a good thing. That's yeah. just... It's just a positive. <laughs> yeah, oh and then God. and then when they interview people from those communities, they'll say like, yeah, there's like a lot of backlash saying that he's like working with these, you know, Chinese mega corporations. But right. like, you can't argue with the fact that all of these people now have access to power, and it's very easy to say like, you shouldn't do X, Y, and Z when you're sitting in your home connected to your Wi-Fi tweeting it. Sure, but, yeah, <laughs> you know. But he's like, yeah, it's like the objectively, it's a good thing. You know, Akon says when he meets with these people, they're, like, confident and connected. And, Aww. like, they just, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, we live in a fucking capitalistic society. But whenever people use that capitalistic society for good, it just really brings a tear to my cold, it's cold heart. It's amazing that it's possible. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's my first story. <sighs> and as we say, gong noise. Gong noise, so. indeed, my friend. That is a good, good news. Mm -hmm. So my my stuff 
Uh, my my first one. Have you ever heard of a circus called Circus Roncalli? I think no fucking it's German, way. So I you might actually... be butchering that. You actually no. took one of mine. <laughs> uh, this is I. Fuck, oh, you know no. what? I thought I thought this was one you had in the last episode. Turns out it's the one no. you have in the current episode. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So we actually talked before we started recording that there is a, a high possibility that we could pick the same stories, given that there is sort of a low concentration of good news stories out there. Um. So we're both doing this. Yay! Um, for anybody who doesn't know uh circus roncalli sick for pronunciation i don't even know if that's right anyway so they started phasing out the use of performance animals in the 1990s um and what they have decided to replace it with is a massive scale light show it's basically just a hologram um or i guess multiple holograms of the same animals um But it's all stylized, and they project in 360 degrees, and so you get, like, what would be photorealistic if it weren't a hologram. Um, Images of, like, elephants and herds of horses, and apparently there's a gigantic goldfish, which is sick as hell. Um, And then they just... Which is exactly what I want to see when I go to the fucking circus. (laughs) I'm like, when are they fucking bringing out the goldfish? Where's the goldfish? God damn it. Um... (laughs) <laughs> the funny thing about this is that, like, so I guess a lot of countries are, are trying to ban the use of animals in circuses specifically because it's just exploitative and abusive for them, uh, which is good. Yeah, just, just, just a bad time for animals. But <laughs> my thing is, like, if I had known that 360 degree light shows was an option instead of, like, watching an animal that looks about the size of a pinhead from my perspective in the stands. Hell yeah, I would want the hologram show. That's sick. We're living in Blade Runner. That's so cool. It's <laughs> The future is now. It's just objectively better than an a- like an animal show. It's so awesome. Why <laughs> would anybody complain about this? And I love I love this story because it's I think pe- when people want to, like, replace current not-so-good stuff with more sustainable, better stuff, there's this push towards, like, but we can't. This is how it's been done forever. And I think I, I just... My favorite thing is seeing people who are creative with the solution. And this is this is such a cool solution that wouldn't have been possible 20 years ago. So neat. Do you have Damn. anything to add to this? That's just like, I don't know. I mean, I read the same articles as you. Right. It's more just like, that's really cool. And I think people will also go just from the sheer, like, I want to see a fucking hologram. Um, Yeah, I know I would. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's just like, I don't know, man. That's some pretty cool shit. The future is now. Makes me feel good. Gong noise. Gong noise. Should I do That's another one, one since that was yours? <laughs> um, no, no, no. I got you. We'll just alternate. Okay. Like again, I have I have a, a story at the end that'll probably take time. Ah, yes. So, um, this one, and I hope I fucking took yours. Uh, CRISPR. Uh, are you aware of what that technology is? No, Maybe I I'm just not. Explain it. Okay. <laughs> um, I forget the specific abbreviation. Uh, like what it stands for, but CRISPR is a method used by scientists to essentially manually cut out segments of DNA from things. Oh, um, yes, yes, I know what that is. I took yes, yes, bio. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've been in the public school system. I think <laughs> I know what the fuck's going on here. Um, so, yes, it's anyway, it's these uh, manipulated, essentially, enzymes of sorts that go in and they say, okay, I want this specific segment of DNA cut out. They snip, snip. Um, and it also has the ability to insert uh, DNA, possibly. Um, but today I'm just talking about the cutting it out because, turns out, researchers for the first time have completely eliminated the HIV virus from the genomes of animals. Um, what the fuck? That's so cool. What the fuck? So, like, I think previously we've kind of talked about how there was the case of uh, the bone marrow transplant where they had, uh, I think this is, I forget what specific disease it was. It was like an autoimmune disease. I said we were able to cure that by um, essentially wiping out someone's br- like bone marrow and then mm-hmm. inserting healthy bone marrow. Um, and then HIV is, is a form of autoimmune disease. 
So, like, that was the only other, like, alternative, and I think the only other um, HIV cure came from treating somebody in the similar way because there's a certain amount of people in the world who are immune to HIV. Um, mm-hmm. So this this one is essentially saying what they did is they had these uh, CRISPR, um, uh, CRISPR proteins, and they used something called long-acting slow effective release antiretroviral therapy known as laser art which is precious um that's such a cool name (laughs) right so the lasers suppressed the hiv replication because we have talked about in a previous episode go check it out if you haven't um Mm -hmm. the biggest concern about hiv is that it's so rapidly mutating and it inserts its viral genome into your own dna that the like there's no way to have a vaccine against it because of how much mutation that there is so the laser suppressed the replication and then the CRISPR manually removed all of the viral genomes from the cells. So Whoa. about a third of those mice that they treated did not have HIV, which oh is my sick. God. Um, and if my calculations are correct, they're in the animal testing trials. So it'll maybe take like five to seven years before we even hit clinical trials sure. depending. Uh, But that's super duper interesting. And that is, in my opinion, a lot more feasible than like manually doing the bone marrow thing, because I didn't don't think I fully discussed it then. But the only way to get rid of the bone marrow is they would essentially do an ultra fast like chemotherapy treatment to kill your bone marrow and then re inject bone marrow. Yeah, I was going to say earlier, that sounds like a really painful process, but uh Yes. I mean, so if, if it works, then great. But Jesus, I can't imagine. Yeah. But at what cost? So <laughs> that was really interesting. Um, I'm always interested in seeing applications of CRISPR. And that's uh, super duper cool. So yay us gradually yay curing, curing HIV. Gone God, I can't always. imagine. I can't imagine that we were like maybe a decade or two off from curing HIV. Which is so that, fucking wild. And we that talked is about. crazy. Yeah, in a previous episode when we did the HIV epidemic, how fucking devastating this disease was. Right. Um, especially Millions in the gay of community, people, people of color. Yeah. It was awful. Uh, and it is one of those where you know, it's not a death sentence. And that was actually some feedback we got after we posted that, as we didn't make it clear enough. It is not a death sentence if you contract HIV no, with no, no. like how many. It like, was. It just isn't anymore. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not anymore. Through the miracles of medicine, it's completely treatable. Like it's going to be there forever. But like, there's drugs on the market that will prevent it from causing a great diminishment to your life. So right. science has come a long way, and science is good. And uh, it's doing its best, you know. It's putting on its its overalls and putting them up and uh, <laughs> putting on the boots one at a time, just like the rest of us going out there. Not like the rest of us curing HIV, but... Yeah, it is you know. doing more than me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I probably... Uh, it's, what, it's 9.30? I haven't done anything to cure HIV today, actually. Yeah, no no so. major disease is being cured by me in my pajamas right at this moment. Maybe later. After oh, actually, lunch. shit, wait. I might be because of my research. <gasps> Never mind. I'm what? with science. <laughs> I'm a writer, so I don't do shit. <laughs> You're like, well, I... Yeah... Yeah, I stare at a blank screen and don't write things because I'm scared. That's my oh, job, baby. That's um, a fucking mood. All right. <laughs> okay, so gong noise, I think? Gong noise. Gong. Okay. So my next thing. Uh, Canada has done something pretty cool. Uh, they are moving to ban most single-use plastics by 2021. That's Which good. Which is pretty damn cool. Uh, I <laughs> There's a lot to say about the, the single-use plastics thing because, ha ha ha, most pollution happens as a result of corporations and single consumers aren't making that big of a difference. Um, but I, I do know that in Canada, I think it's something like 10% of plastics get recycled 
in Canada, yeah. which is not very much. And apparently, yes. um, there's a report that estimates that by 2030, Canadians will throw away over $11 billion in plastics, which is also not good. So what they're doing yeah. is they've got a directive that passed actually 571 to 53, which is a crazy majority. Uh, and, and they want to replace all of the items uh, on a list, which I'll read here in a second, with biodegradable alternatives. So this is going to impl- include plastic straws, water bottles, single-use bags, cotton swabs, plastic plates, cutlery, drink stirrers, and coffee cup lids. And there are others, but those are, like, the big ones. Um, and then there are other items that don't necessarily have an easy replacement. So there are, like, cigarette filters or stuff like that. Uh, those will still be phased out, just not as quickly. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> they want to replace all plastics, all these plastics, with stuff that is either reusable or biodegradable or both, ideally. Um, so what, what they're looking at for, like, plastic straws, for instance. I know a lot of people are like, but paper straws are bad for people with disabilities. Well, do I have a secondary good news for you? Because apparently there's like a pretty good biodegradable plastic here in the works. Um, so that that's an option for the plastic straws, for water bottles, for um, any hard plastics, really. So, and then of course, you know, you've got cotton swabs that you can not use synthetic fabric for and yeah. uh plastic plates obviously you just replace them with regular plates there's all this stuff going on but i i just think it's crazy how quickly they're planning on doing this like yeah. i remember when the the plastic bag ban happened in california like it still isn't all the way across the state yet like it's been what three years yeah and and they still haven't actually finished phasing out plastic bags they want to completely get rid of single-use plastics in like two years, that's crazy. Fucking town. Canada! Yeah, come on, Canada. You, in some ways, you're doing so good, and this is <laughs> one of them. <laughs> yeah, and that's honestly that's so good. Yeah, like you said, the whole waste by corporations. But uh, yeah, I don't think either of us are in any way diminishing how fucking bad single use plastics are. <laughs> like they're very, this is very awesome. Bad. Uh, I think, honestly, this is something that is normal for me because I grew up in Southern California. Like, I've had a reusable water bottle, like, all of my life, question mark? Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, Are you the same? I didn't. I I actually grew up with, like, those fucking Nestle water bottles that you You buy You motherfucker. Nestle is fucking decimating. (laughs) Yes, I know. I'm aware Um, now. But, like, you can say, like, at the time, like, everybody around you, like, it was pretty normal to have a reusable bottle, right? Um, Yeah, well, of course. And and then later, like, I was in high school and I realized I don't have to do this. And then I got a reusable bottle and my life has changed. But Right? Yeah. Fucking? Yeah. I have my bisexual sticker. I've got a cat face (laughs) with three eyes. It's a fucking statement. Anyway, um, it's it's pretty normal. Yeah, it's pretty normal for us to have reusable like pl- like water bottles, um, yeah, which apparently was abnormal, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it was apparently abnormal when I came to like UCLA. Like, there were a couple people who would like bring plastic water bottles every day, and I'm like, dude, like you're fucking like bringing a plastic water <laughs> bottle every day, and they're like, well, I'm not buying it; I'm reusing it, and I'm like. Then just fucking buy a fucking... buy a, play, buy a <laughs> water bottle. Like if you're reusing the same plastic water bottle every day, it doesn't make sense to me to like not just buy one. Right. Um, so I've gotten and a also, couple people every time you sold refill on it. it. Every yeah. time you refill it, doesn't it like it wash begins... a few more microplastics into the ocean? Way to well, go, yeah, Nathan! Because, you um... single handedly are destroying the planet. I hope <laughs> you, you know. motherfucker. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the specific. I I know it has to do with specific plastics. Yeah. Um. There was a big issue for a while with BPA plastics, which I don't. Yes. Fu- I'm not a polymer scientist, so I don't know the abbreviation for that. Uh, PPA <laughs> would release some BP, like it has BPA release, which is like bad for you. Uh, right. If I remember correctly, I read some papers a few years back saying non-BPA water bottles also release, like, another similar, like, plastic toxin or oh something boy. like that. Um, <laughs> it's all in very little levels, but, like, at some, like, there's so many, like, you can buy 
buy really affordable metal water bottles on Amazon for like 15 bucks. But also I feel like yeah, every like concert, <laughs> yeah, every concert I've been to or like every fucking orientation I've gone to, they give you like free water bottles. Um, <laughs> so an avenue. And also I'm that bitch that has reusable utensils and straws, but mine are rainbow. So before you come at oh. me about being a weirdo, I have rainbow utensils. So that makes it better. Yes. Um, I have a reusable straw, but I use straws so rarely that it, like, yeah. never comes out of my kitchen, so. Yeah, because, you know, you and I, I'm not really much of, like, a going out and getting a coffee, like, mochas and ice and I mean, even if I use movies, it, if you I know? get a coffee, I just it's hot. drink it through the lid, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I but, a like. a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I guess breast. Yeah, but then I just drink out of the cup. Like, you know what I mean, right, though? Exactly. Like, I just, like, yeah. I don't really use straws, and then I have reusable saying, grocery bags. And what we're saying is we're better than you. So yeah, so, like, listen, if you aren't doing any of this, <laughs> yeah, feel bad constantly. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where all of these, like, things that we're saying is difficult, so, like, solutions when you right, first yeah. hear about it. But now, at this point, like, my water bottle is, like, an extension of who I am, and I will be dehydrated <laughs> within an hour if it's not on hand. So, yeah. We yeah, must no. work together to save Gaia. Gaia's Mother <laughs> Earth, right? Am I? Yes. Cool. You are correct. Sick. And, like, obviously a lot of this comes from a place of both regional privilege and, like, I don't yeah. know, general socioeconomic privilege. Because I'm not going to lie, the reusable grocery bags that you keep, like, your fruit in are kind of expensive, um, yes, but but like eh, this is just one of those things where it's like a do what you can kind of thing because yeah, hey, whatever's in no your sweat capacity. off my back because um, corporations are causing most of pollution, so you can always use that to help you sleep at night. Yeah, say fuck them, and yeah, <laughs> don't buy Nestle. Nestle, don't can buy Nestle. Fuck right off. Well, that's a whole other episode. Um, yeah. Oh God, is it we're my episode do next green. week. Who knows? <sighs> Um, anyway, gong noise. Now gong it is my noise. turn. This one, uh, this one's precious because there's Aww. like, it's not, it's not anything on a global scale. It's just like sweet. Just some so, nice news. Were you ever in Girl Scouts or Brownies or any of that bullshit? <laughs> you think my mother loved me? <laughs> wow <laughs> jesus um well uh, i was in brownies until i was kicked out of brownies um, i love that you were kicked out that's so funny <laughs> brownies is for by the way like 10 year olds so yeah what could a 10 year old have done to get kicked out it definitely did not feed into my fear of abandonment at all no don't no, no, psychoanalyze no. that because i already have um <laughs> this so one good. is sweet. Uh, it's apparently it was about um, somewhere in Greensville. It's Greensville, South Carolina. There okay. was Girl Scouts who were selling Girl Scout cookies, and it was super duper um, cold. Like this was written in oh, February, so it's February. I heard about this, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is an older story, but it was in February, and so a man was you know walking past them. And realized that they would be standing out there until they sold all their Girl Scout cookies. Aww. So he bought five hundred and forty dollars worth of Girl Scout cookies, oh my God, so that they so wouldn't much. have to stand outside anymore. That's and I'm so like, goddamn cute. That oh shit's God, so precious. So yeah, he just like uh. draw, and his name has never been like released. He said, "I don't want to be named. I just like don't want you guys to stay out in the cold," which is just. <sighs> What a cool guy. So nice. Yeah. He, he dropped half a thousand dollars. Yeah. Because he could, and he wanted to help some kids. That's so nice. Yeah. Ugh. And it's just, it's not something that affects the world in the grand scheme of Ugh. things. I just like knowing that there are people out there that go, eh, I don't need to do this. And then just like buy all the cookies and give them to their friends. And It's fantastic. It's very sweet. I love sweet. that. God, that's a whole lot of cookies, though. That's, like, a shit ton of cookies. Yeah, I'm sure he's got, like, an office party or something he could, like, give them out. <laughs> or Maybe they are all for so him. Cool. I don't know. You I know? mean, I would I would eat all of them. I would eat them all. Yeah. I, I yeah. know myself. 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be one of those things where I'm like, I'm just saving them up and I'm going to freeze some so they don't go bad. And then like three months have passed that I've eaten $540 worth of Girl Scout cookies <laughs> and no longer I mean, fit lemonades. into my, my jeans. So yeah. Those lemonades are some some good shit. You lemonades? No, fuck off. It is thin all mints, about obviously thin are the mints. Best, yeah. But the lemonades are also very good and I didn't I get any I don't think I've had year. a Girl Scout cookie in years. Really? Yeah. I try to buy a box of thin mints every year if I can help it. Um I missed them this year because haha, I had school and shit. So Wait, they already was... sold them? Yeah, this year Fuck. it's over. <laughs> well, I mean, it's written in our, it's written in February, so it was probably being sold around the time of February. That's yeah. fair. Damn. Well, not shit. Not to end this story on a bad note, but yeah, you missed it, Olivia. <laughs> uh, all right, your turn. Oh, no gong noise. Gong noise. Gong noise. <laughs> gong noise. <laughs> okay, so my last one... Um. This is pretty cool, and I <laughs> there's so little to say about it, but I'm going to try and just... <sighs> I want to verbalize how fucking dope this is. So, uh, in 2017, a team of researchers discovered an ancient ruin deep in the, uh, the Mosquitia rainforest, which is in Honduras, uh, and it's known as the Lost City of the Monkey God, which I feel like is just a very poor translation, but it makes me happy. Um, and so <laughs> they discovered... Uh, dozens of species that were previously thought to be extinct in Honduras. And that's Yay! really fucking sick! <laughs> yeah, they, they went in 2017, and the report was actually just released this week. Um, and they found a thriving ecosystem of uh, some species that are rare, some are brand new, and some were thought to be extinct. They found a total of... <clears throat> 198 species of birds, 94 butterflies, 40 small mammals, 56 amphibians and reptiles, 30 large mammals, and then a whole shit ton of plants, fish, rodents, and insects. Oh. I have no more information for you. Uh, oh, there are some honorable mention specific finds. They found a tiger beetle that they'd only ever seen in Nicaragua, and they had previously thought it had gone extinct. And they also found uh, what is called the false coral tree snake, which hasn't been seen since 1965. That's pretty goddamn what cool. What the fuck? Right? And so now they're, like, going through, like, the the legal process of doing conservation efforts there to make sure it stays the way it is now. Because it's an important ecosystem, goddammit, and there are some really cool animals and plants there. Yeah. How dope is that? It's, it's I a remember whole it. world. I feel like this was, like, recently came out because I saw somebody had retweeted it with the comment, nobody fucking touch them. Just, like, we found <laughs> them. leave them alone. Leave them. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. But that's I, I good. How cool that must be as a researcher to, like, just find, first of all, a lost city, which is rad, and then to find mm -hmm. all these species that, like, history thought was lost to time. How dope is that i love this story i <laughs> i didn't have enough to say on it but i couldn't not bring it up it's just so dope yeah that's fucking wild that's Ugh. bananas yeah man oh god shit stuff like this makes me want to go into research like i don't know botany and shit but like i'm no i'm no good at the science and math I'm i no bet you are anybody can be good at science and math if they put their heart into it <sighs> You have no idea how angry you just made me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? You do calculus for fun! <laughs> and? <laughs> I knew a guy who... It, th this made me feel a little better. When I took AP... Uh, all of the AP. Um, AP Lit in particular, and then AP Calc that same year. I was not good at AP Calc. And part of it was that we didn't have a very good teacher. But, like... The other part of it was that I was bad at calc. Um, and there was a guy that I knew, and he was, like, amazing at math, period. And he, he, he got a five on the test, and it was, like, a whole thing. And then he was also in my AP Lit class. Uh, and the boy could not write an essay to save his life. And he was like, I don't understand how you can, like, write a paper and have it be good. And I was like, yeah. 
well, I don't understand how you can solve differential equations, so welcome to the club, my guy. <laughs> we, uh, we swapped advice in those classes, and it was very nice. Oh, it was just a, that's cute. Just a good time. Yeah. Anyway, so that's my gong noise. It's a, it's a really cool story about finding animals and plants and shit. Gong noise! Gong noise! <laughs> God, this has just put me in a great mood. Yeah, I'm feeling good now. This is what this is for. <laughs> oh, this is... And I'm going to be editing this, and I'm going to be like, oh, man, I get to hear it twice! Yay! Um, so, so nice you hear it twice. Uh, it's wonderful. So <laughs> now I have a, a good story to compound the happiness. Hopefully you have a good story from this week, I do, do actually. I do. Oh! Good. I'm just feeling like this. I'm radiating positive energy. Watch I go to like, I'm going to a family gathering today. Watch I go to the family gathering. We fucking get into a yelling argument about the like political Uh. left. And I'm like, well, there was the energy. And now it it is gone. Sapped Um, from my body like a giant mosquito. (laughs) My uncle listens to this, though. So hi, Dodd. How are you? I hope that you have a good time at 4th of July. (laughs) Um... (laughs) None of my family knows about this podcast, and that's how it's going to stay. <laughs> Is it because you just said that comment about your mom? Because that yeah. seems like it would not pan over well. It wouldn't. <laughs> um, but, all right, here's my positive, here's my positive story. Okay. So, this past, okay, this first fucking year at UCLA has really rung me through the ringer, and I've kind of alluded to, like, how miserable I've been, and, like, I make a light of it, but, like, I have genuinely not been enjoying my time here. Straight up not um, having a good time. Yeah, straight up not having a good time. Yeah. Um, and part of that was, when I was in high school, I was never really, like, good at science um Mm -hmm. which is why i say that anybody can be good at science because i in high school i took chem and ap chem and i was that bitch you know you get like an 80.01 and you're like (laughs) like you're just like goodness by the skin of your fucking teeth you get a b let me just let me just an 80.01 is not bad at chem. No, 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 no. Um, let me clarify. I never passed a single test in that class. Um, and by not oh. passed, I mean I legitimately got a 60% on everything but the first two exams. Um, so I don't know how that worked. Question yeah. mark, question mark, question mark. Um, kind of makes yeah, you it was... wonder about the public school system, huh? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but it was really devastating to be like, to like study right, super yeah. fucking hard. And then I get my score back and I got like a 63% and I'm sitting next mm-hmm. to somebody who got like a 92 and is complaining. And you're like, all right, Fuck sick, off. Rachel. Um, <laughs> so like the only thing that I was really good at is probably biology. <clears throat> um, but that's solely because I have a photographic memory. So I would just stare at the diagrams and then recreate them in my mind for the exam. So does that mean I'm good at biology or have a photographic memory? Who's to say? Um, (laughs) But I never really had any interest in going into, like, science as a result. Because I was like, well, if I'm not good at it here, I'll never be good at it. And I definitely was pretty abysmal at math. Like, I was in the accelerated math programs in middle school and just fucking tanked in high school where I got, just like, the way. yeah, I got, like, a B in, pre-cal- in, in pre-calc, and I just said, that's a fucking day. If I get a B in pre-calc, I can't do calc, and just, like, threw my hands in the air and never did math or physics or anything. Um, so then when I went to community college, I had figured out that I really wanted to either do nutritional science or agricultural engineering because I have, like, a special passion for agriculture, Um, And it is one of the few things where I can, like, memorize statistics off the top of my head super fucking easy. Uh, But you know what that requires? Math! Math. So um, we had to do a placement test, and I was like, I'm not fucking repeating anything. And so they had a bunch of sample questions online, and I hunkered down for two straight weeks and retaught myself all of math. Uh, which apparently oh I did God. successfully enough because I placed into calculus. Damn. So, which was like a massive fucking win for me. And then I don't know what happened, if it was just like my state of mind, if it was that I wasn't at school for 16 hours a day. 
uh, but I <laughs> excelled at math and got an A in every math class at community college. Nice. I don't know what Hell fucking yeah. happened. Um, I proceeded to do really well in chemistry, which was a complete shock to me. Uh, and then I also did phenomenal in physics, which was a super shock since I had never even taken physics in high school. Um, and all of these were like, wow, okay, so I can do something that I thought I was fucking garbage at uh, pretty well. And I think I graduated community with like a 3.9 something. Nice. Oh, uh, shit. And, like, I was super proud, and so then I got into UCLA for biophysics, and, like, I knew it was going to be a punch to the NADS, because it's a fucking UC system. Uh, And, like, the first exam that I took in, like, a general physics class, I failed, but I failed below the median, so I was like, eh, I mean, above the median. So I was like, all right, well, eh, okay, so. Could have done worse. Um, and then the next exam I took, like, I fucking bombed and was, like, way below the median. I got, like, a 33%, and the median was, like, 50. Um, next test after that I didn't do well, and then over this cumulative year, like, my test anxiety has just, like, gradually gotten worse and worse and worse because it was this phenomena where I would, like, already be anxious But then these physics professors just have, like, this big dick energy where they're like, I'm going to put something insanely unreasonable on my final and see who is capable of figuring out a graduate-level problem in 50 minutes. Everybody wants to find the next goodwill hunting, and it's like, uh, this isn't your job. Be a teacher. My God. Right? And so, like, I've had very few reasonable exams in my time in the physics department. (laughs) So then, like, as a result, I've gotten really fatalistic where I'm like, what's the fucking point? I'm going to spend like 16 straight hours studying for this to walk into an exam and fail. Right. Through no fault of my own and then just leave unconfident. Uh, And it just like got worse and worse and worse and worse. And it was definitely the worst this quarter where like I'd studied really hard for both of my bio exams, which like even my bio like hasn't been as good because there was one exam where I could have easily gotten uh, the median was like uh, 65 and I'd gotten a 75 or something like that. Um, And I was looking over my exam and I could have absolutely gotten full points on one of these questions, which brought me to like an 83. Um, And so I went to the TA and I was like, hey, I hit every single point in the rubric. Why, like, why did, like, why did I get points marked off for this? And she goes, it's illegible. And I look at it and I can concede that my, like, handwriting isn't the best in the world, but I'd gone out of my way to make it super legible. Um, And I was like, I mean, I think it looks very legible, like... And I think I deserve points for all of this. And she goes, next time, don't write in cursive, which I can't do because then I would write so slow I couldn't finish. So then I was like, well, now it doesn't fucking matter because if somebody decides they don't want to read my handwriting, then I just like fail. Cool. That's fucking insane. Um, which is insane. And I complained to the teacher That's... and I'm pretty sure he yeah. regraded it because at the end I got an A in the class, which is huh. great. But it was definitely like... It was kind of like up in the air what it would be as far as a grade goes before the curve. Um, Holy shit. And then in another class. A TA just decided that she would fuck you over because she didn't feel like reading cursive. Yeah. That's outrageous. Right. Um, And then uh, there was another exam where, like, I had written every, like, it was, like, describe the methodology of, like, this thing that we did. And there were plenty of points on that exam that I deserved to get marked off for. But there was this one question where I answered every fucking question perfectly. And it was because I didn't use specific keywords, even though it was apparent that I knew exactly what was going on. But I didn't use her words. Garbage. Which is, like, so then I, I left this fucking quarter thinking, like, this is stupid. Like, I'm destined to, like, get bad grades and completely subjective right. reasons. This is all bullshit. Blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> so my first week off, I was going to start studying for the physics GRE, which I am petrified of taking and mm. still am. But that's a whole that's a whole nother can of worms. That's another episode. <laughs> Um, and I decided that it was probably for my own benefit far better to take time to like figure out why I'm doing all of this because Mm -hmm. after that year, it's like, what, like, what am I going to do? I'm going to graduate with like a mediocre GPA, which like my GPA is fine. Like I'm at like a 3.6, 
but I want to get a PhD and the minimum for PhD is 3.0. And if you want to get into a good program, the undisclosed minimum is like 3.5, right? So it's like, I'm not doing horribly. I'm doing right. pretty well. But, but you it, don't want to like teeter on that edge for too long. Yeah. Yeah. And then like jeopard. And also the fact that I'm there at all is for completely subjective reasons, which I hate. Um, so like... <laughs> I want to do a PhD, but then, like, by the time I hit that break, I was like, do I really want to do a PhD? Am I going to be able to do a PhD? Am I going to be able to get in anywhere? Um, And I kind of decided that I was going to take the week to figure out what I was doing, what I wanted to do, and seek guidance on how to get there. Because, you know, obviously I was not going to get to wherever I wanted to be sheerly on my academic efforts because it's just subjective and like me putting all of my weight in that is clearly not working and it's making yeah, me fucking academia. miserable. Academia um, is garbage. <laughs> right. Uh, and so, you know, I had a lot of people tell me that a, a large weight in grad school applications is obviously going to be connections and that there are plenty of people who, because I've like read every single fucking Reddit GRE form about like, <laughs> what are your stats? Where did you get into? Um, right. And you see people who are like, I had a 3.8 and three years of research experience and I got like an 80th percentile in the physics GRE and I got into nowhere but like Northern Arizona University. And I'm like fucking panicking with my like barely 3.6, haven't even taken the physics GRE. Um, And a lot of people said that uh, if they got interviews and didn't get accepted, there's a lot of weight in determining fit in interviews because you can Hmm. be the best student in the world but if you're interviewing someone and they're just like i want to get good grades and i want to succeed and do the things and get good grades they're like okay no and and what Um, else yeah yeah because because uh grad school at least in physics is like you're gonna fail every exam but pass um (laughs) because it's just it's difficult material like it would be right. pretty damn difficult to get an A in some of those graduate courses, like, without a curve. And so grad school is more about testing your ability to continue to push even against <laughs> insurmountable odds. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is that it's torture for your brain, but on purpose. Yeah, the, the first two years you have to take classes... Um, the first year I hear is like one of the worst years of your life just because like everybody (laughs) has imposter syndrome at the same time, but won't tell anyone else. Um, but like, again, what I'd read is that person, like personality matters and passion matters. And if you go into an interview and they can clearly see that you love what you're doing, you're going to get boosted way up on that list. And I was like... You know, I was like, well, I don't even fucking know if I have that (laughs) because (laughs) I was just in such a bad place. And so I spent like the whole week uh, reading research articles and reading papers and contacting people that I knew that like I even like believed would like never want to talk to me about physics because like I just like I'm very it's very difficult for me to pay attention in lectures because if it moves slightly slow at all, I tune out. Right. Welcome to being a gifted program. It's ruined your brain for, like, life. Um, Hell yeah. High five over this Discord call. Right? And (laughs) so uh, I reached out to people. I'm like, they fucking hate me. Like, I didn't pay attention during lectures really well. They think I'm a bad student. Mm. Oh, well, we're just going to throw it out there and see what fucking happens. And I have just been, like, floored by the positivity and supportiveness of, like, everyone in, like, the academic community that has been so helpful to me. That's Um, awesome. Like, I had a teacher this week who I thought hated me, and he agreed to meet with me for, like, 30 minutes to talk about grad school. Fingers crossed that that goes well. Um, I have another teacher whom I love dearly who is going to meet with me and talk with me about grad school. I have my PI who is incredibly generous with her time and gives me a lot of advice And I have another teacher whom I've never had directly one-on-one who I interviewed with and wants to meet with me and, like, we'll talk about stuff. And I've just been, like, I've been asking for a lot of advice and talking to people, and it feels very nice knowing that there's this support there and there's people who just want you to succeed. Um, 
And when That's I talked awesome. to my counselor about it and how I've been reaching out with these people, she does, she said, you know, connections play a lot of, you know, weight into these applications because, you know, if you have a teacher that really likes you, they give a call to the admissions board and they say, hey, I really like this person, um, which isn't me trying to like manipulate my way into a program. It's more of kind of a reassurance that if I find somebody who I connect with, no matter what school it's at, like whether it's the top 10 or like just like a normal state school and I like really connect with them and I really like them and they like me like they seeing how much I care about this and how much I want this is going to like pay off um oh yeah which is just a really nice feeling and makes me feel like this is not fruitless and this isn't just a statistical game of of min maxing your scores and your experience (laughs) um You know, this is finding people who are looking for people that are just as passionate about their research as they are. Uh, And I'm doing a two. I'm doing a research project until I graduate, um, wherein I have to write a total of five research papers for academic credit. Um, But I'm actually excited about it, which is like my kind of good news on this because I think if I had to do that before the quarter ended, I would have been like. God, this is fucking bullshit. Like, it's all a min-max right. game. But now I, like, have the whole summer in front of me to research something I'm very passionate about. And I'm in lab over, like, 30 hours a week. But I love mm-hmm. it. Um, and I'm happy. And I enjoy reading what I'm reading. And I'm still insanely nervous about the physics GRE. It's given. <laughs> but, like, I'm happy. And I'm finally, for the first time in the time that I've transferred, happy to be here. Um, I'm so proud of you. Oh, my God. I'm in a very good place. And I'm happy. And I feel like everything matters again, which is not something you feel very much (sighs) in adulthood. No, it isn't. It isn't, is it? (laughs) Yeah. I'm so happy for you. That's amazing. Yes. So life is good. That's the biggest gong noise of all. Yes. Brooke, you had a story? It's not so much a story as much as it is just, like, a thing that happened. I graduated from college. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you saw the post. I we posted about it. That's it. why we skipped it. Yeah, week. we did. Yeah, no, it was, like, a crazy weekend. Because it was finals for you, and then it was graduation for me, but it wasn't just mine. Um, I, I had mine on Sunday, and then my boyfriend had his the day before, and then his brother had his the day before that, and so it was a whole thing. But yeah, I I am officially a piece of paper holder myself, and I, I have a wow. thing that says that I didn't read the books I was assigned, hooray, um, mm-hmm. just like John Mulaney says. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's, it's, it actually feels a lot better than I expected. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't really think it would have much weight to it. Honestly, I was so tired by the end of it. And like, burnout is a very real thing. And I was, I was in it, man. And so, you know, graduation was coming up. We had like a week left. And I remember saying to Christian, I don't even really want to go because like, we were just so tired. And he said the same. He was like, yeah, I, I would rather just take that day and sleep. But I went, and I'm super glad I did, um, because Olivia was actually there. Uh, she and my dad made a sign for me, and it, it said, your knowledge is sufficient, which is from one of those Nathan Pyle cartoons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cartoons? What? Comics? And it was very nice, and it made my heart warm. And, yeah. um and the other really cool part about that is um, I am officially employed. Wow! Yeah, I'm so I proud have... for you. Proud Thank for you. you. Proud of you. <laughs> I'm not the English major, clearly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, at Thanks. least you can do math. Um, um, very proud no, of it, you. It was very cool. It, this, this is actually a new development as of yesterday. Oh! Um, I've been doing an internship for a while, and they were thinking about putting me in a different section of the company, um, and they had me do this project, and I was super nervous because, like, I had never done anything like this. It's a marketing position, which I've never done, so they they sent me this project, and they were like, write an outline for, <laughs> for let me, how did they phrase it? 
pro- financial professionals that would want to advertise to potential clients from both the or from all three the baby boomer gen x and millennial side um advertising why they need to think about retirement and their specific needs it's all quite complicated and they sent me uh, a zip file of 11 documents that i needed to read through and use Oof. as research i had never done anything like this before i did end up finding that it was actually really similar to the research that i do for this show Woo! Um, <laughs> translatable <laughs> skills Hell, yeah Hell yeah. Um, But I was super nervous. And even when I finished it, it was four pages long and it it was just an outline. And I was like, is this what you want? Do you want this from me? Is this my is this okay?" And I never got a response from this lady. And I was like, oh, my God, she hates it. She hates me. Oh, no. (laughs) And I emailed her and I'm like. Two weeks later, I was like, hey, is there an update? Should I do anything? And and the response I got was super disheartening because she goes. Um, no, we don't need anything else from you. We'll let you know. Thanks. And I was like, oh, God, it's been two weeks, and this is she the She does hate me. She does hate me, and also she wants to kill me and my family is, God, is what I'm God, I've been fucking there. God. <laughs> and so I, I emailed her one more time, and I was like, hey, just letting you know, I need to, like, have a job at some point. So I, I'm wondering, should I start interviewing with other companies? Because, like, she wasn't giving me a yes, but she wasn't giving me a no. And I was real conflicted and sad and scared. And so yeah. I, I sent this final email and three days went by and I didn't hear anything. Three business days, I might add. Oh, um, shit. Oh, shit. And I was like, well, that's that. I'm going to go back to my uh, my internship, and then I'm going to quietly walk away with my tail between my legs and try and find something else. And I was panicking and, like, applying for jobs and shit, and finally last night I opened my email on a whim, and she was like, hey, so sorry, it's been such a long time. Um, thank you for being so diligent. I'm working with HR to figure out what kind of position we're going to make for you. So I have a job, I guess. Oh so she's shit! Just working it out with HR. Yeah, yeah. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm gonna. You're cry. gonna have I big cry. boy money. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so excited to not be poor. <laughs> <sighs> oh, oh god! And and I'm sorry. You got another cat. I did. Oh my god! Yes. Um. <laughs> uh where do I start with this? We we had two cats. Uh kind of a bummer. One of them um one of them passed away at about a year old. She had uh, a virus called FIP, which is a whole episode's worth of nightmare. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's been like 3 or 4 months since that happened and our other cat, Kaylee, who is the love of my life. Uh she's been lonely and we were concerned because at some point both Christian and I are going to be working full time and we've never left her alone for more than a few hours a day. So we were like, well, maybe it's time. And so <laughs> we went to uh, a little pet adoption at PetSmart. Um, and they have a bunch of, like, rescue kittens and stuff. Uh, and we, we went, okay, so we're going to go, but we're not going to adopt anybody unless we fall in love, <laughs> which is always the trap, right? And we walk in, and we actually went through, like, six kittens, and we were like, yeah, these are cute, but, like, whatever, man. You, I love your phrasing, and we went through six kittens, like, this one's not good enough, you throw it yeah, behind just, your like, shoulder. Yeah, tossing just it, toss. like I'm tossing clothes out of a closet. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, we cuddled them lovingly, and they were all adorable, um, but there was this one cat that walked up to Christian in his little tent, and he asked to take him out, and they they put him in Christian's arms, and he settled in and started purring, and then I held him, and he fell asleep in my arms, and That's his name the sign. his name is Quiche. Uh-huh. Like the food, he is perfect. We were gonna name him something else, but when we saw the name tag at like the adoption, we were like, "Well, that's the perfect name, and I'm never changing it ever." It's Keish. So, Keish, it is. <laughs> that's fucking precious. He's amazing. Yeah, he's three parsnip, months old and orange. Parsnip uh, had a similar story of like 
Matt was lonely at the time. We, we, he had another cat and, uh, she also had passed away, which was sad. Um, and so I was actually worried about Matt being lonely. (laughs) So we went and, uh, we were looking at the kittens and I'm like, this one's cute. This one's cute. This one's cute. This one's cute. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that whole (laughs) dynamic. And then there was one we picked up and she was the last of the litter. She was the runt of the litter and her eye was kind of puffy. She had like a mild conjunctivitis infection or I guess something in her eye. Um, And so I picked her up and she fell asleep in my arms immediately. (laughs) And I was like, Matt. (laughs) And so he got her and it was like, it was a roller coaster because she, the conjunctivitis thing turned out to be like an ordeal. And we were worried that it was like a lifelong illness that we wouldn't be able to afford. But it turns out that she's just fucking disgusting and we love her and she (laughs) bites, not with love, just regular bites. And cats are very good. I love cats. Keish is so funny. When we got him, or I guess when we first picked him up, he had, like, the this smudge on his mouth, like, and I thought it was a fur pattern, and it looked like a Hitler mustache. And when we went to, like, bring him home, his foster mom was like, yeah, so that's, um, he's a dirty boy. He has food all over his mouth. And sure enough, it is just a food stain, and it has been over a week, and it still hasn't gone away. Oh, he's disgusting. I love him. He's a gross man. I love him. He's perfect. Everything has been very good for us this past week. Me and my therapist had a really good session the other week, too. Oh, I have a new therapist. Oh, yay. (laughs) Look at this positivity hour. I hope you all left this feeling very positive. And if you haven't, I was going to say something threatening, but this is the positive (laughs) So I hope you feel better and I hope you have a good day. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. This is not sponsored by special, what is special help? Whatever it is. Special help. What's, what's the name of that fucking janky therapy website app? Oh, I have no idea. (laughs) It's the one that had the controversy was in like every YouTube video ever. I am. I am not on this radar in particular. I, I don't uh, know. It doesn't matter. I'm not recommending it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. We on love that you so much. Wonderful note. Thank yes, you for tuning do. in. Oh, we have a new patron. Okay, no, we're gonna announce the patron and the heavy hitter. Hell yeah! Oh, that's right. <laughs> we're gonna announce a new patron and the heavy hitter. So, if you uh, you know who you are, you're going on the heavy hitter. Don't worry. Perfect. Heavy hitter. Yeah. Yes. All right. So everyone will hear your All right. beautiful name. Thank you to everybody. Uh, as usual, we have social media. We are at TTK Me Up on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. We also have a website, which is ttkmeup.com, which has links to both our merch store, which is through Tee Public, and our Patreon, which we just mentioned. If you would like to throw some money at us, that would be wonderful. That'd be great. Yeah, and we're doing a thing right now where if you if you donate a dollar, you get a shout out on the show. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Or I think it's five dollars. Anyway, I don't know my own stuff. Uh, and then <laughs> donate twenty dollars or twenty five. Oh God, what's wrong with me? Then you get it's a okay. T-shirt. Yeah, you get a T-shirt, and then if you donate any amount of money, we have a running thing where uh, at some point, when and if we reach a hundred dollars a month, we will do. A Reddit AMA or an AMA on something. Uh, you can ask we us shit. Decided. It'll be great. We haven't decided, but but uh, we've got plenty of time. I, th- I think. Um, so yeah, you guys can ask us whatever you like, and it'll be really fun. Um, I think Yay. that's. Oh, if you have story ideas, because we do this thing called campfire horror stories every once in a while. Uh, if you are a writer or you just want to try your hand at writing something spooky, then you can send that to uh, ttkmeup. Uh, wait, yes, ttkmeup at gmail dot com. Yep, you got and it. You can you also got it. just write things that you want to say to us because we like having our ego stroked. Yeah. Speaking of stroking our ego, if you would like, you can re- le- uh, leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts from. We like reading them and it helps us get more downloads, which is two birds with one stone. If you we have love one stone. to say, we do like 
one stone, especially when that stone is cold stone creamery. This isn't sponsored. Anyway, uh, yeah, we like reading your positive reviews, and I try not to read the negative ones if there are any. There aren't. What am I talking about? What's happening right now? Where are we? Anyway, don't leave negative reviews because it's mean. Peace. And it hurts our feelings. It does. We love you. I'm fragile. We're very fragile. (laughs) It's been real. Sure has. Deuces. See ya. Bye.